We have five days until we have 85 chickens coming. With that, we have to get our brooders ready for the chickens. We're gonna end up putting 30 chickens in here, 30 chickens in here, and then I think 25 egg layers are gonna be in this one. Over the last eight years, we have collected a lot of feeders and a lot of waterers for all the chickens that we raise. today's video we're going to talk about that talk about our current water and feeder situation and also different waters that we have and that we've used over the years you go to the feed store every single year beginning of spring chick season and there's so many different kinds of waters so many waters which one to choose so currently we use all of these some of them are for egg laying chickens some of them are for the meat chickens okay so these ones are great for baby chickens. They have mason jar. I'm pretty sure you homesteaders have these laying around. Fill that up with water, screw that on. Uh, also this one, same thing, except it's tiny. And this one's for quail. Hey, quail nuggets. They're pretty much off the heat lamp. I'm just giving them water. Quail are so tiny that they could drown in here. So this one is perfect for that, specific for quail. Also, it'll, it'll work for baby chickens too. But then as they grow, you have to think about which ones do I use? You could use multiple ones. They have different styles of these, but one thing I don't like about this particular one is that that comes off. It screws off and this is how you fill it. You put the water in there and then you put this lid on it and then you turn it. And then you put it upside down. I don't like that because it, it never fails. You always spill the water and then the water ends up not being full. It ends up being like right here. These ones are the same concept except the top unscrews and I like these a lot better. That one is the same as this one except this one is bigger. This bigger one is heavy. If you're gonna use this one, this is probably more for a stationary coop where you could bring the hose to it Another thing about these, the way they work, it has this cap. So when you fill this up, you have to screw the cap down and the spout down here. Now if you don't have this cap on, down on the bottom spigot, all that water is just going to spill out. Don't lose the cap. Heavens forbid you lose the cap. And then when you are done, you got to put the cap there. That's where it goes. Between this one and this one, same thing. Except this is lighter, you could carry this. It's a little bit easier to carry. This is hard to take off. It's not very easy. You really have to, you know, you almost kind of have to get on it and then turn it. If you notice, a lot of the times when we use these, we like to put a pallet to make it somewhat level. That water can just like trickle out, trickle out, trickle out. And eventually this will be all empty. And in the summer, that's, that's no bueno in the summer because uh, this will drain quick and you'll think, man, my chickens are thirsty. Another option where I've used for years is these chicken nipple waters. Say that three times fast. Chicken nipple water, chicken nipple water, chicken nipple water. This one I hooked up to a PVC pipe and then you hook up a hose to the end and have it continually flowing and chickens hit that and water comes out. And then gravity is gonna flow the water all the way down into those nipple waters. This one works, um, but you need to hook up a hose to it or hook up a 55 gallon barrel or some kind of you know bucket or water source. So that way to have water constantly flowing in it. Another option is to use these chicken nipple waters underneath a five gallon bucket, which I've used for years for our broiler chickens. And that works pretty good. The only thing I guess drawback for that is these are prone to leak a little bit. I feel like in the summer the chickens don't have enough water coming out of it for them. Maybe they do, maybe they're, they're probably perfectly fine. I mean, 
but I think mentally for me, I'm like, oh, the chickens are not drinking enough. They more, need more water than a, than a couple of drips. If you're gonna use these nipples, I would use them straight off the bat when the chickens are still young. When they're older, they're a little bit more stubborn. They're a little bit more set in their ways and don't like change. And they're a little bit more challenged to train them to this. Bernice, good morning, Bernice. So then from the chicken nipple waters, we've tried these cups. This is a bigger cup. This is a smaller cup. This one, they have to hit that yellow spot and then water comes out and fills up the cup. This one, same concept. They hit that, water fills that in there and they drink. Uh, clean them out once in a while. They're not perfectly clean. If, it, if you have really heavy, cold winters, these can possibly crack because they are plastic. So I would maybe only use these seasonal. So if you're gonna use these for broiler chickens, uh, especially like Cornish crosses, they can be very just big and clumsy. Uh, these will tend to move. The chickens would move these so much that they would end up being like, like that. And then the water's just come pouring out and they can't drink. I didn't like these for our meat chickens. But egg layers, I could see, I could see these being very helpful. Here's another one that I just purchased the last couple years. I like this one because it has a handle. And then this pops off pretty easy. It's like a five gallon bucket almost. It does have this little cap that you have to take off to allow air in there so that way the water can flow out. So don't lose this cap. So you have to fill, pop that in, fill it up. This is my emergency broiler chicken water, or it's a water that we use for our egg layers when we wanna leave for a couple days or go on vacation. So these ones, these smaller ones, this one, this one, this one, and this smaller one, we use in our chicken brooders currently and those are great for the brooders uh, because it holds a lot of water in them and they're short because they fit inside the brooder. After a few years, you buy, you start buying all these feeders and waters, you start to realize, hey, you can make this stuff, right? You can make some of these things. So I had some PVC pipe laying around and now I have a video of this, of how I made this, you know, some scrap two by fours. And it's really kind of a, I guess an emergency feeder for them because chicken math is real guys. Chicken math is real. Before you know it, you have chickens come in or they're being born and you have no feeders and waters. So what do you do? This is a metal one, same concept. You know, these typically come with a top with the little holes so the chickens can go in there. Those things get in the way. So we take off the lid on them and just have these as troughs. Here's some bigger troughs too for our meat chickens. Same concept as these, but these are hung and this could hold a lot of feed. We just pour the feed in these and these are all DIY handmade, super easy. Currently for our meat chickens, today we use a combination of a five gallon bucket and this bell water. Now I liked this bell water or we switched from the nipple waters to this bell water because I felt like the chickens can drink more water with this. There's more water available to them. They drink about the same. They'll go through about a, one of these five gallon buckets a day in the summer. Uh, and that's the uh, about 30 meat chickens. So hooking it up to this, I like. Currently, I like this setup. And then you could move it up and down by just a string as they grow bigger. You know, you adjust it so that way the water stays. Now you don't have to use this strictly for meat chickens. If you have a stationary coop or even a movable coop, I guess, you can use these for egg layers as well. If you wanna go on vacation, it's difficult to go on vacation, let me tell you. But it's possible. Here is an automatic feeder, DIY, five gallon bucket, put a PVC pipe in there. Chickens put their head in there and they could take out the feed. You know, you just fill this up with feed and they could poke in there and get feed. It works. It, they can spill it, you know, like it kind of be a little bit wasteful, but if you want to go on vacation, 
this is an option. This is another option. This has a hat. Pretty much the same concept. It's just a big feeder. You pour the feed in there. So depending on how bad you want to go on vacation, you may need two of these if you're going for weeks at a time. It's like an automatic feeder. And then this is a rain hat you put on so the feed can't get wet. Now, this is not a perfect thing. We use this mainly for when we want to go on vacation. I've noticed if you have big chickens, which Freddy, our rooster, he's a big chicken. Uh, this is kind of low to the ground. And he has a little bit of hard time getting in there. I mean, he gets in there, but you kind of have to duck and get low on this thing. You know, we, we have elevated this like on a pallet. That helps. Or we've taken this off all together and just use it like that. But if it rains, it's going to get soggy. Also, certain feeds um, can get compacted in here, like if it's a real powdery feed. And it might have a hard time uh, releasing from inside in the middle and releasing out. So it might get stuck and compacted in here, especially if it gets a little wet. Uh, I think uh, the humidity here does not help with that. Our current setup with our egg laying chickens, all right, all right, is we just use rubber pans. You know, you can use all the fancy waters and feeders, but a lot of the times you just gotta keep it simple and use a simple pan. Now we like the rubber pans because when they, when they freeze in the winter, you can just pop them out and they don't break. Um, also, they're a little bit more forgiving if the land that they're on is not completely straight. You know, they kind of conform to the hill, so they're not just dumping out the water. We like using the uh, pallet to put them on to kind of elevate them a little bit, make, keeps them a little bit more cleaner. If you're moving chickens constantly like we do, we move our egg layers or our meat chickens, I mean our pigs are moving, everybody's moving. Nobody's stationary. Having the rubber pans I think are better for that because you're always dumping out the water, you're always moving them, you know, you have to clean them out and they're constantly moving so it's just a little bit more easier and a little bit more manageable to grab a five gallon bucket fill it up, bring it here, and then pour them water or feed as needed. If you guys have a stationary coop, having one of these water towers would be perfect for chickens and the chicken nipple waters or those cups I showed you. This would be perfect for that. Hooking it up to the spigot and then having it down there. And then they also have shade. Uh, so that way they could drink water, have shade, and you have all this water so you don't have to even fill up the water if you have working chickens you know if they if you want them to work the soil or a pile of compost throw the feed in there they will work it you know you don't even need a feeder just throw them wherever you want them to work and they'll go at it altogether we have about 20 feeders and waterers that we all use we all use everything here in some way you know different stages of a chicken's life we use these waters as they grow or for different situations such as going on vacation or different terrain some of them we hang up with a chain if it's super hilly um, that works too uh, I know it's maybe chicken 101 here but I feel like it's important because this type of video would definitely would have helped us starting out as we figure out how to take care of our chickens and which equipment we should get because I definitely don't want to be buying waterers every single year. But eventually chicken math will catch up to you and you will start accumulating a lot of the stuff. You need emergency backups. You need waterers if you have a chick, a sick chick, uh, a brooding hen and you want to separate them from the flock, well they need water or feed. You need to think about those things it could be very simple or it could be very fancy. Kind of depends what you want to spend or what you want to do. But we have chickens coming this week and I need to clean these out and we need to prepare the brooders. Some things I still need to get like pine shavings. But thank you guys for watching and it's going to be 
an awesome, beautiful chicken season.